All right, so I'm going to get started with some of this first lecture here. First of all, again, uh, so social media too. Uh, you can uh, email me there, sdccd.edu, uh, requesting the videos uh, back for part one and most likely for part two. So in this part of the class, here's our goals. Our goals for the networks. Uh, we're going to cover Pinterest, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and Snapchat in that order. Usually the classes are four weeks long. Um, last month it was three weeks long because last month was a weird month. It was the end of the uh, spring semester and the start uh, of the of the summer semester, so we, we missed one week. So we're pushing the content over one week. So Pinterest this week, then LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat. We'll cover all of these networks. Uh, in general, um, most of these networks have a demographic that um, people that are on this network are usually follow this this demographic are interested in these topics. So, very briefly here, I'll give a general, like, one-word description of each of these networks. The problem with that, though, I never mentioned this in part one, the problem with that is that the um, trying to pigeonhole that all of the people on Pinterest are X and all of the people on Instagram are Y doesn't quite work. Everyone <laughs> is on every network maybe less of a certain audience are on a network and more of a certain audience are on another, maybe. But all of the networks could be the right network for you to find your audience. Especially when you put in an investment of time and, and money, right, regarding boosting your content, paying to reach more people. So in general, uh, it seems to be that um, Pinterest is a female-focused audience. So if you've got uh, a product or a brand with this demographic, um, you might do well going into Pinterest. It seems that it has evolved into being a female-focused social network. LinkedIn, professional audience. I will, of course, go into detail uh, to all of these once we get to them in detail. LinkedIn will be next week. Pinterest is today, of course. Instagram, quote-unquote, young audience. However, that's defined, and when I get to that, I'll fully define it. And Snapchat, <coughs> younger audience. And I'll explain that when I get to that. But I'm saying, again, if I have a product that is focused on, um, you know, corporate professionals, yes, it might benefit me to go directly to LinkedIn, but that does not mean I should not take into account Pinterest, or even Instagram, or Snapchat, or Twitter. So I didn't mention this last month because I, I, I don't really think it's that valuable to try to pigeonhole the audience about, here's this audience, so don't go on that network. I think because it's all free to set up and free to use in a basic manner, it behooves you, it doesn't hurt you except for you know time loss, to try them all. Try to go on, on Pinterest even though my audience is a professional audience for my product. Um, so these are the networks we're going to cover this month. But I do want to back up uh, one more thing about Facebook. We covered Facebook last time. I want to back up and do one little thing about uh, Facebook, and then uh, we'll cover Pinterest today. I want to talk about the Facebook pixel. So I'll load it up on the screen in a moment. But remember that uh, when we were talking about boosting posts last week on Facebook, it was so long ago, so can anyone remember? What is, what is boosting posts on Facebook? What's your definition based on the lecture or what you know? What, what, did, what did that mean? Yeah. A, to target your audience. 
Yeah, pretty much paying to target your audience. So paying some amount of money to reach the right audience. And we can do that on all the networks, basically. We can do it in Pinterest and in LinkedIn and Instagram, Snapchat. We can do that to all, in all the networks. We really covered it much more in Facebook, because I think that's one of the most effective ones. But you can do this on Twitter. Uh, eventually, again, when we talk about these other networks, YouTube, we'll talk about YouTube in part three. Um, we can uh, do that there, too. Short answer, you pay to reach more of an audience. Just like in the real world, I pay for my radio ad to be on more radio stations. I pay for my billboard to be on more streets. I pay more uh, for the newspaper ad to appear in more newspapers or more days or whatever. So we've talked about that. Um, Facebook pixel is what then I'll cover here because the networks can give you great data How effective you are on their networks, but once people leave, it's not as effective. So when people are, log are logged into Facebook or Twitter or whatever, Facebook and Twitter and all of them can track people's usage of the network very easily. It's their system. They invented it. They can track all of the stuff going on. Um, so I can see the data. Well, someone looked at my ad for two seconds and moved on. Someone looked at it for 10 seconds and clicked. I can see all of this data um, as long as they're on the network. When a person leaves the network, doesn't it make sense they cannot then track you anymore? They're not on the network. I've made an ad on Facebook. They've left Facebook to go to my website. Facebook then can't track you exactly like that on your own website except for using the Facebook pixel by using the Facebook pixel however then Facebook and you can track more data about the effectiveness of your ad and I'll show that in a moment when I log in. Uh, where did the sign-in sheet end up? The pink sign-in sheet? Where did the pink sign-in sheet end up? So, Facebook has this pixel that will then be able to further track what the user is doing. Let me log into my Facebook account. You don't have to do this. Uh, I'll just do it and, and show you how it is. But if you want to see this yourself, you, you can do this. But I'm going to log into Facebook to show you where the pixel is. You saw last time that when I was working on one of these, when I was working on one of these sites, one of these client sites, Victor's Bakery, you saw that when I was uh, creating content, boosting post, you saw this previously. I created a, um, I created an ad which is pretty, pretty bad. It doesn't have any picture, it doesn't really have any link or any great deal about it. Well, like two people saw it. I want 200 people to see it. So that's when I boost the post. So you saw this last time. Here's the difference. Um, I glossed over it last time, but when I was setting up the audience and the budget and all of that, there was an item right here, Facebook Pixel. Add pixel code to your website to report conversions. See website activity and build audiences for ad targeting. This is the Facebook pixel. On mine, I have it turned on. And what this is saying is, this is then now a way for Facebook to keep more track of what's happening with your ad. How are people actually clicking and following and moving through um, from Facebook to your site? So on our notes here, when you boost a post, You can 
activate the Facebook pixel. So that it can continue to track the user. Because once they leave Facebook, Facebook's reach ends there. They're not in Facebook, except if you use this. Downside. It's technical and requires rather advanced web design skills. You have to add some HTML code to your website. How many of you have any experience in HTML programming language? OK, those that didn't raise your hand, you want to go to the people that did raise their hand and hire them for some help. <laughs> because I cannot teach you how to set this up. I can show you how I might do it on my website, but um, my website might be different than yours. I might have made my website in Dreamweaver. I might have made my website in Squarespace, and your website is in WordPress or, or uh, Weebly or something else. So I, I'm not going to do a lecture on how to turn on the Facebook pixel. I can't. It depends on everyone. I'll take that. Thank you. So did everyone sign in on the pink sheet today? Okay. So further looking at the information here. Um, there is a little learn more button. Let me see what that says, just to check it. Uh, I'll put this link directly into the notes as well. Um, official manual on that link. So let me take a look here. Facebook. Facebook Pixel is an analytics tool that helps you measure the effectiveness of your advertising about getting started set values so you see it's it's more technical than we really have time for or want to show in the class but um, the documentation is there and if you have some bit of tech savviness before you begin you'll need a website you must be able to update your website's code create the pixel go to this link Click Create, add this pixel to your website. Again, uh, I can't lecture how to do it step by step because you might not have a website right now. That's fine. You might not have access to the website right now. You might not know how to edit it. You might not be comfortable editing it. It's just like how many of you are comfortable changing your own oil of your car or your spark plugs and such? Uh, no, I go to a professional for that. Well, same thing with your website. You probably go to a professional to manage your website. So whoever is working on your website, to fully have this properly set up, you need to get in contact with them and have them set up your Facebook pixel so that this can track your effectiveness much more completely. And how much does that cost? <clears throat> how much you got? <laughs> now, it depends on who you hire uh, to work on this. Uh, you can get like an entry-level uh, web designer. Uh, starting like at you know eighteen or twenty dollars an hour. I mean, how much does the pixel cost? Pixel? No, the, the the Facebook Pixel is totally free. What's costing you is cre is how much your budget is for the boosting. So it's free to set up the the Pixel. Yes. So so basically, Pixel um, is a is a link between Facebook and your like your landing page some sort of messaging back and then what kind of data do you receive from it? Yes, so it is a link back between Facebook and your website. And so you're only going to see the data that comes directly from Facebook to your website, no other data? Exactly. Uh, the point of it is that someone sees your ad, they click the link, they go to your website. That's what Facebook can track. Yeah, Facebook's not going to be able to see the data of some other pages that are not linked to the pixel. Okay. For that deeper sort of data, then that's when you use Google Analytics. Then that can give you data for all of the pages on your site. Um, this one only covers those that are coming from Facebook traffic, basically. So, so you're so basically so it's like a relatively simple uh, for a web designer to go in and add that feature to your landing page or wherever you want it to go. 
It's relatively simple if you are comfortable with writing a little bit of HTML code. But I mean, if you're paying somebody. Oh yes, yes. If you're paying someone, it should be should it's be easy. Cost a thousand dollars. No, no. no. So depending who you're hiring to work on your website, it's a simple hourly thing, and it should be doable in less than an hour. It should be doable in like twenty minutes okay. if they know what they're doing. Okay. Uh, so yes. just real briefly, people want I haven't done it very recently to remember, but it is either just one simple line of HTML or, yes, one simple line of JavaScript. So just plain old HTML or JavaScript code, copy and paste to, uh, I believe, the header, uh, the header, the head block of the of the page, and, and it's in there. So uh, short answer: uh, you add code to your site. Does Facebook uh, provide the code? Yes. You need to copy and paste it. However, you don't exactly like you don't copy it and paste it to your your home page. You know how you can edit a website to put a picture in, but you can edit a website also its code behind the scenes. You copy and paste this into the code of your website, not like into a new paragraph of, of regular text. So it's it's adding a line of code, and um, the short of it and the long of it, it's the same thing. The short answer is, well, you add the line of code, but the long answer is, it's code. You need to log into the site, or your or the the people that work on your site, and then add the add the code that way. So I would say, I recommend you set this up if you're able to, because. It gives you more data. It shows you more uh, information about who are the people that clicked on your ad, at what time of day, where, where did they come from, how long did they stay on your site. More data, more information, more knowledge. Knowledge is power. Once you know those things, remember we said previously, start with a wide net, so a big demographic, then read and understand <coughs> your data, then narrow your audience. I don't know the age range. I think I know, but I don't quite know the age range of my audience. I don't quite know their interests. So I'm going to start at a larger level and say, well, everyone in San Diego within these ages and this interest. Then as a, the data comes in, um, with or without using the, the pixel, then I see, OK, well, it seems like uh, I'm looking for people within this age range, within these cities. So that's where I'm going to spend my next $5 to reach that audience. So start narrow or start wide, that is, and then eventually go narrow as you get the data. And the pixel gives you more data. And that's the big idea with the pixel. I'm going to move on in a moment. But does that make sense? Any questions further about that? Yeah. And it's only really tracking who comes to your page. You, you don't, you're not going to see after if they if they want to browse your site you've got 20 pages or if they want to place an order you don't see any of that stuff you just see when they hit your page no the, it does track once they come from facebook onto your site it can track what other pages they look at okay. not just the page they land on it's just that they have to come from facebook from that okay. ad for it to then keep track so you see them you see all the traffic right your website okay yeah if they yeah. come from facebook okay. How do you get to that code? In Facebook or your site? It's in here somewhere. Um, I add, oh, well, it was right here. Uh, so when I added, I put it into the network. I'm going to put it into the network folder. That's going to be the direct link to the article. Then to actually uh, set it up, I'll put also the, the direct link there. And it tells you right here to actually get it, you go over to your. Go to your events manager and then go to Pixel. So it'll tell you there exactly. I'm going to put that link into the notes as well. So step by step.
So that link will be in there. All right, so I'm going to move on to the topic of Pinterest for today.